Well, bezzy has got her piglets here and she had them back in September and they're at the age where it's time to wean them. And uh, we, we got some pretty big plans for our Idaho pasture pigs, which I think I'm gonna talk about a little bit at the end of this video because it's kind of the end of an era for us. But uh, right now what we need to do is we need to get Bezzy out of this pen and move her over into the electric fence. And then we're gonna end up moving the other pigs, Penelope and Mike, who is our boar, into the same pen as them. Um, so for now, we're gonna have to take up a T-post and open this up a little bit and try and get her out without letting the piglets out. So this is the pen we're gonna be moving Bezzy into to. And a lot of times we would really just raise this up, but we're so tired of fighting with our pigs all the time. So I'm just going to cut the fence, open it up, make it easy for her. We really like using these step in posts because we can just take them in and out super easy. We'll just set it over here. Now we got this whole lane. So just go right in. The real trick here is opening up this panel and not letting all 11 piglets just run wild on the farm because they don't know anything about electric wire or any of that yet. So Ashlyn's going to take our little sorting board here, see if we can't lock them up in this A-frame. There you go. Still got one out. There you go. Let's see, there we go. All right, let's grab some food. Come here, Bez. There you go. Ah, ah, ah. Here, Bez. There you go, Bez. There you go. Come on. Come on. Yeah, man. There you go, Bezzy. Here, here, Bezzy. Uh, I don't think she's moving, so. Uh, there we go. Release them. So like I said, we're weaning these piglets off of Bezzy and uh, they're gonna be all on their own. They've been eating all the feed that bezzy has been eating, so it's, it's time to wean them. We usually do that around five weeks, especially when you have a big litter like this, because Bezzy had a, a 13 piglets, two of them passed away, so she's got 11 on her now. And when you have that many piglets on a sow like that, she gets so sick and tired of them, and they're just, they're just abusing her. So at this point, we wean them off, and they're gonna be, uh, probably next weekend, gonna be going to their forever farms or homes or whatever you wanna call it. So that's pretty exciting times, and. I'm sure they'll do just fine. Well, we got Bezzy in her pen. She's back in the electric fence away from the piglets again. I'm sure she's glad to get a break, but we've got our other two pigs down there and they're different pens. So we got to get them moved over into the same pen as Bezzy because these little guys, well, these big guys, these are big pigs. They're going on a trip to their final farm. And I'll talk a little bit more about that probably towards the end of the video give a little bit of an explanation for why that is. Um, but uh, we need to get them all three moved over so that way we can put them in this pen and then, you know, next weekend eventually load them up and take them to their new, new farm. All of our fences come down to this one single line here. So we're gonna untie all of them so that way they can come right down here into this pen that the camera's standing in right now. Okay. Huh? You did Penelope. Yeah, there's not a lot of pigs that you can kneel down in the pig pen and them not try and eat you even a little bit. She's a very gentle pig. She was the first Idaho pasture pig we ever bought. <sighs> These pigs are so well trained to the electric fence, sometimes they're a little bit finicky going over it. But at some point they realize, oh, there's no fence there. Yeah. There she goes. And then maybe we'll walk her all the way up to Bezzy so she's kind of out of the way and not trying to come back through here. 
Oop. We've trained these pigs so well, they just do exactly, usually exactly what we want them to do. I definitely recommend if you're gonna get piglets, buy piglets, or, or if you're gonna get pigs, buy piglets and raise them up to exactly how you want them to be. They haven't seen each other in a while. Maybe pour that on the ground for Bezzy because Penelope is definitely the top dog between the two of them. Let's go get Mike, our boar. Gotta open this fence. Oh, hey dear, Mikey. Yeah, this was a this was a pen that we had the pigs in. Uh, that feeder pig in the last video that we took to the butcher was right here for quite a while, and he uh, he was off of it for maybe two or three weeks. Maybe now nah, maybe two weeks, and this is what it looks like when they're done with it. So all the grasses and the nettle and everything comes and starts growing in there. So it looks really good, but time to move Mike over. And poor Mike's been alone for quite some time now. Ever since Bezzy got separated to have her litter, he's been by himself because we were giving Penelope a break this, this fall for her litter, but he's gonna, he's gonna have his ladies back again. Come on, Mike. Here you go. Come on. Come on. Come on, Mike. Here you go. There you go. There you go, Mike. Come on. There you go, Mike. All right. Well, moving pigs doesn't always go as planned, of course. And Mike is usually pretty good about it, but I think he's been in that one spot a little too long and got used to being there. So it freaked him out a little bit to move out of it. It's just like anybody leaving your home. So, but we got Mike here. He's in the same pen as the other two ladies. We'll go up and see them, but mission accomplished for pig moving today. This is two sows working it out. They gotta figure out who's the dominant one. Usually it's Penelope, but that's something you don't wanna get in the middle of. They'll hash it out. That's probably a little hard to watch for some of you that don't raise animals, but that's a totally normal behavior. Chickens do it, cows do it, pigs do it. And honestly, we do it too as humans. We just do it in a different form. So totally normal. There's Mike again, back with his ladies. He's the real boss. But I think Penelope won that fight between Penelope and Bezzy, and honestly, she usually does every year, so. But you can see, Mike, Mike comes in and he's, he's the man. Moving the cows has become so incredibly simple because we spent so much time last year setting up all these different paddocks running all the wire up along the fence and then it goes out over to there. That this year, all I have to do is turn the fence energizer off, which is right here, and then come over to the next paddock and open it up and close the last one. It's super simple. If you remember from last year's videos around this time, I was talking about how we have some stockpile and we're trying to stretch it as long as possible. Well, we're in the same situation. We have a lot of grass still, but in Kentucky, it hasn't rained very much in the last couple months. And so we're gonna have to see how far we get. I, I, I think, I mean, I don't think we're gonna have any problem getting into December like we did last year. And hopefully even longer if we can make it because there's still a lot of grass growing, even though there's a lot of weeds in the back. But 
they've done a pretty good job of tackling this field and it's about a half a, a half acre paddock that they're on for about seven days and then we're going to move them to this next one so let me move some fences around and we'll get them moved over behind the camera you can see i've got a crowd here they're just waiting to be moved so hey there cage hey there rosie look at you all fluffy All right, come on. Let's go. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Let's go. Come on. Hey there, buddy. Yep, that's a good bull. Rosie is pregnant right now. And obviously you probably know Buddy, which is our Angus bull. Rosie's due in February, I believe. And right here is her calf that she had that we uh, weren't sure if he was gonna make it earlier in the year, but he was born in February, so he's, uh, but he's a good size. So he's, this guy is our steer, so we'll butcher him probably the middle of next year, maybe the end of next year if you want them to be even bigger. But these jerseys get really tall really fast. You can see that, you know, this not even year old calf is basically the same height as Buddy, who's, you know, two, two and a half or something at this point. And uh, so I, I, we really like the jersey beef that we had from our last year. So we're gonna definitely like it again this year, I'm sure. And then the calf that Rosie's gonna be having in February this year is actually gonna be a cross with Angus. So it'll be interesting to see how, how you know, the growth of, of a Jersey Angus cross is. I've heard really good things. So we, uh, we're hoping for good things. But we're gonna leave the cows here cause they're gonna be munching for the next seven days. And then they'll be off to the next paddock and hopefully they'll be out here. My goal is to make it to New Year's if we can do that, but we will have to wait and see. So earlier in this video, when we were moving our pigs, I mentioned a couple times that it's end of an era for us with Idaho pasture pigs. Uh, we, we've been raising Idaho pasture pigs since we bought this property uh, back in June of 2022. So uh, we're, we're, we've had Idaho pasture pigs for a decent amount of time. We've learned so much about them. We've really enjoyed the breed, um, really enjoyed the breed on so many different levels. And I, the pigs we have now are the best Idaho pasture pigs we've had on the farm. We've had some that weren't the greatest breed standard. We've had some that were wonderful and, and these were part of that wonderful group. And that's why we've kept them back um, between all of the piglets we've had uh, over the couple of years. But we have actually decided to part with our Idaho pasture pigs and uh, move on from them. Uh, they, like I said, are a wonderful breed. To be able to have a pig that can go into a pasture, like a cow field, let's say, and not completely terrorize it and put four foot deep craters in the ground is pretty incredible. And the people that created the Idaho pasture pig breed are, I mean, some very patient people first off, but just what an incredible job they did at creating a pig that is able to pasture to that extent. Other pig breeds are able to pasture, but not in the way where they don't destroy it or, or till it up. So, uh, I mean, all pigs are, are made to forage. You know, every pig does that, but not every pig can forage and not completely turn it into dirt. So, um, that being said, that's also a downside for us because we've learned that we aren't big fans of pasturing our pigs. and that sounds strange, but let me explain. We have, you know, a certain amount of acres and every time we've put our pigs on it, especially in the summertime when the grass is growing so incredibly well that it'd be perfect time for pigs to be eating all the forage. We found that our pigs tend to overheat a little bit and we don't have very good, we don't have very much silvo pasture. We have this area behind me, which is like half an acre where we move them around and they have all these black locust trees and whatnot, which is, my ideal spot for any kind of pig, even an Idaho pasture pig, um, is a little bit of pasture and some trees so they can shade in. And we don't necessarily have that. So we have forest and we have pasture. We don't really have a mixture of both. That's something we would like to work on over the years. And uh, we, you know, we have such big plans and uh, 
we have big plans for all of that. And so right now we have decided to part ways with Idaho pasture pigs. And like I said, the, the pasturing ability is a blessing, but for us, it's also a downside for our farm. And sometimes certain pigs or certain breeds aren't gonna work for what, for what you have on your property. And so that's a downside for us. The other reason we're thinking of getting rid of Idaho pasture pigs is they are more of a homestead pig and they grow very slow. It'll take, you know, 10 months, sometimes even a year, sometimes even more um, to get a, you know, 250 pound or 300 pound uh, feeder pig ready to go to butcher. And that's something that, you know, if you're okay with the slow growth, it's, they're wonderful tasting, it's wonderful tasting meat. So that's not the problem, but, um, you know, down the road, we might be looking for something a little bit quicker growth. Last video, I talked about how we had a Tamworth Berkshire uh, feeder pig that we got from another farm down the road from us. And we've really enjoyed the personality of that pig. We really enjoyed the growth rate of that pig. We enjoyed the forage of that pig and how much they, you know, would kind of till up because there are some times on our farm where we actually want our pigs to till up. And this breed really just doesn't do that to the extent that we would want it. And to get them to be able to, to till up, you're reducing their minerals to basically nothing and that's not very good for the pigs. So um, we want a pig that grows out a little bit quicker, I think. We want a pig that is a little bit more of a heritage breed because Idaho pasture pig is not a heritage breed pig. It is a, it is a, a mix between three different breeds. It's a Berkshire, it is a Duroc, and it is a Cooney Cooney. And it, it, you know, it's a bit of a mutt when it comes to the pig breed. Whereas something like a Tamworth or a Berkshire, those are, those are heritage breeds and those have been around for a very long time, especially Tamworth. That, they actually say Tamworth is one of the purest pig breeds. And so we've really enjoyed them. And so this winter, we've decided to sell that to pasture pigs and kind of get a little bit of a break from pigs, really figure out exactly what we want to do and where we want to go. We are definitely going to be buying pigs at some point. Um, you know, I know we're having a kid soon and it, we're going to be so incredibly busy. So we're going to have to maneuver all that. But at some point we will definitely get back into pigs and, uh, most likely it's going to be a different breed than the Idaho pasture pigs. And thankfully we found a really great farm that, uh, is very happy to raise them. And, uh, I think it's gonna be a really cool experience. They don't live too far from us, which is awesome and very nice people. So we're really excited about that. And so that's why these pigs are in the pen together because next weekend they're gonna be leaving the farm and it, it'll be a little a little tough for Ashlyn and I because we've invested so much into these pigs and especially Penelope who we bought a month after we came to this property, uh, you know, to our property here in Kentucky. So uh, it, it, it'll be a little tough, but it, it's okay because we know that they're going to a good place that's gonna to continue to raise them and breed them and sell high quality uh, Idaho pasture pigs to people, which is what we've done over the years of, of raising them. So I figured I'd just give you guys a little explanation on, on what's happening. And, you know, after next weekend, you're probably not going to see any more pigs on the farm for a little bit. Um, you know, we have some other projects that we plan on working on, so I'm sure you'll, you'll end up seeing those, uh, as long as everything goes right. It's been a pleasure raising Idaho pasture pigs and you know, if you have Idaho pasture pigs out there, don't think that I'm hating on them. Uh, they are a wonderful breed and they are great for some people. And I think we've just started to learn that maybe for us, they're not the best breed. So we're gonna try to try some other stuff down the road and see if maybe another breed is good for us. So, but thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.